In terms of category, agricultural sector contributed 64%, while OTR, industrial and construction contributed 33%, and the balance came from other segments. The standalone EBITDA for the quarter was at 547 crore with a margin of 20.1% EBITDA. The EBITDA for the quarter has been impacted by higher logistic costs and raw material costs in addition to higher power costs and investments in brand building for the quarter. Other income for the quarter stood at a loss of rupees 15 crore while unrealized gain stood at rupees 26 crore. The other income loss was on account of MTM, loss of investments in equity mutual funds and debt. Coming to the next forex items, for the quarter, we had a net forex gain of rupees 117 crore. This includes the realized gain of 91 crore and unrealized gain of 26 crore. Profit after tax stood for the quarter was recorded at rupees 320 crore versus 331 crore for Q1 in financial year 22. Our our gross debt stood at rupees 2752 crore at the end of 30th June 22, of which rupees 2251 crore is relating to is related to working capital debt. Our cash and cash equivalents were at rupees 1972 crore. So far we have incurred a total capex of rupees 1322 crore on the ongoing capex program of rupees 1900 crore. For Q1 financial year 23, the euro hedge rate was rupees 85. The forward hedge rate currently stands at rupees 85 for the levels for the financial year 23. For financial year 23, as guided in the last earning calls, we foresee sales volume of 320 to 330 metric thousand metric ton, considering the capacity enhancements from ongoing projects, which will come online by the end of final, first half of this financial year. However, there may be short-term challenges on account of inflationary trends, rising interest rates, as well as weather patterns in Europe. The board of directors has declared a first interim dividend of rupees per rupees four per share. With this, I conclude my opening remark and leave the floor open for question and answer. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ashutosh Tewari from Equivalent Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah hi, sir. Uh, so, firstly, on the margins, uh, if I look at quarter on quarter, uh, you because the thread trade has gone up almost 3 rupees per kg and RM costs also increased, I think you are broadly were able to uh, compensate the effect of this RM and thread cost increase quarter on quarter. But other expenses are short of almost significantly if you remove the expenses, uh, remove the flat cost. So almost there is a 27% increase quarter and quarter in the other expenses. So what's the reason behind that? Is there any one of four there? So there are two things on that. One is the, if you see the numbers, uh, you need to account for the higher turnover in this uh, quarter as well. So you need to uh, put that. And also, as I said, the power cost has also pl uh, affected us. And some part of the branding which has uh, come in this last quarter, which uh, you know uh, has also come into play uh, in the particular quarter. The payments have come in that quarter. Sir, I think see, the volumes have gone up roughly 8% quarter on quarter, but the other expenses have gone up 27%. So, can you just break it up the power cost increase quarter on quarter and this uh, branding cost increase? I don't have the breakup uh, right now, but uh, we can connect off to that. Okay. okay. And uh, uh, other, you also mentioned some losses uh, in other income. Uh, can you just uh, quantify that or throw some light on that? 
some losses on equity mutual fund and the debt mutual fund you mentioned right so there is an investment portfolio which was created uh, uh, last year and uh, to the extent that uh, uh, there is some losses in the equity and the debt portion of the investments that have been made uh, these are not cash losses these are mtm in nature uh, and uh, there can be some reversals going on so that's why our income is negative in this quarter adjusting for forex gains yes and lastly on the on the outlook side uh, you mentioned that there are some challenges in europe uh, so is it uh, is it because of this whole heat wave is the reason behind the uh, european challenges or is there some other uh, reason behind that yes uh, as i said the uh, your uh, the weather patterns in europe are playing a role so the heat waves which have just recently come Thank you, Mr. Tewari. Requested to join the queue for any follow-up. Also, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your question to two per participant. If time permits, you may join the queue for any follow-up. We have the next question from the line of Sonal Gupta from LNT Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good morning, and thanks for taking my question. A uh, couple of questions. One on the freight rate side, like you mentioned, you expect that to come down in Q3, Q4. So, just want to understand what portion of the freight cost are you passing on? How much is FOB, and how much is on a CIF basis, and how much are you passing on as a surcharge? So, what is effectively what we are not passing on? Okay. So our 50% contracts are on CIF basis and approximately 50% are on FOB basis. And from the CIF basis, whatever we were there, on 50% we were able to pass the subsidy. Got it. So basically on 25% of our export volumes, we would not be able to pass, right? Yes. Right. So as a result, then, I mean, that passing on is coming as higher realization as well, right? Marginally higher, yes. Not the whole impact of it, but marginally higher. Got it. Got it. Passing was also not fully; it was partially. Okay. Okay. So the CIF bid, then we can assume that 30 to 40 percent of CIF customers is uh, not passed on. Uh, and and just uh, I mean continuing with Ashutosh's question on the. On the demand outlook, and especially for the European market, I mean, like, what are you seeing? Is the market actually shrinking given the issue, geopolitical issues? And um, I mean, if you could just talk about, especially the agri-tire market, what is your expectation? So, as of now, what we are seeing is there's no uh, sh uh, shrinking or anything. It is challenging. So we are just, I mean, there's uncertainty and there's a challenge uh, over there. Maybe you know, uh, this quarter could be a little challenging. But overall, the demand is yet uh, not, uh, I mean, it's not shrinking or anything. So we are confident of the numbers, but uh, this quarter, you may not see, I mean, this current quarter may be a little bit of a challenge. No, so that is coming because of uh, then the, I mean, are the distributors cutting back on the inventory levels or what is happening? Yes. I'm, I'm just trying to understand, like, the end retail demand, how is that sort of moving? Yeah. End retail demand as of now is yet uh, good. The distributors are uh, cutting back on their uh, stocks, what we are seeing, uh, because of the uncertainty in the market space. Got it. Thanks. I'll join my you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Lokesh from Valen Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good morning, Rajiv and team. Uh, just one question on my end. We have seen the number of SQs increase from 2,700 to 3,200. Uh, so, and the quarterly volume has gone up from 100 of approximately 60, 65,000 to, uh, you know, this quarter at 83,000. How much would you attribute, you know, that to the increase in uh, SKUs? Just a broad idea, not anything specific. So, the uh, SKUs were built up over, it's not gone up in the last quarter. The number uh -huh. of SKUs have actually gone up in the last one or two, one year to about 15 right. months. Okay. And it's an impact of all of that coming together. So new SKUs help complete the basket. So trial lots of that are there, but with that the entire basket has gone up. So it's not fully attributable to only the num new SKUs. This right. sort of mix, the basket yet remains the same. So new products. I'm just trying to understand the in incrementally how much is coming from the new SKUs. Just an idea I'm talking about. 
Uh, you know, with this current uptake, also we are about six percent of the market. So right. uh, you know, there's ninety over ninety percent of the market available in that sense to grow, and the market itself is also growing. So there is uh, huge scope. Okay, okay. okay. that's it from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Jinesh Gandhi from Motral Asset Financial Services. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. A couple of questions from my side. Firstly, can you share the data points on what was the RM cost for commodity cost impact in uh, this quarter? Of com- no, Hello? Very, yeah. Next request to use the hand. Is it better? Your voice is not clear. Okay, just give me a second. No. No, actually, your voice is breaking. Can I request you to also uh, come in and network? Is it better? Is it better? Yeah. Uh, so, a couple of uh, data points first. Uh, can you share the impact of RM cost uh, or commodity cost in one Q? Uh, we have already witnessed in what we expect in second quarter, and secondly, the price hikes taken in one Q and uh, uh, till August till date. So, price hike that is in, come in in the last quarter is about five percent, uh, and the on the rubber side, we were uh, Q1 was about 160, and currently it's about 155. Okay. And secondly, why do you believe uh, uh, the lower uh, RM cost will only reflect towards uh, fourth quarter and not earlier than that? Uh, is there because is it because of the contracts which we have? Yes, we have the contract, and uh, normally uh, we keep the one month uh, or 45 days inventory as well as material is in transit. So when we import the materials, uh, that has already been booked and is in the ship. So our impact will be coming one quarter later. Okay, uh, got it. Thanks, I'll fall back in queue. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Pramod Amte from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Couple of questions. One, uh, if you look at the Europe Agri Replacement Tire industry, it has collapsed by almost 20%, and still in the first quarter, uh, in this quarter, you have been able to grow the volume by 20%. So, uh, and you are giving the commentary that your uh, dealers are de-stocking. So, what is your stock level uh, in your stock ads and dealers now versus the industry average? We don't have the breakup of what is there in our dealers' uh, stock uh, levels, but uh, more or less, they are uh, the distributors are uh, about 20% higher to where they were earlier, and uh, their demand is yet going on. So, their uh, the end re- user demand is yet strong. So they are de- reducing that level to bring it down. And the uh, second one is with regard to EBITDA margins. Uh, even though some of the pressure seems to be transitory in nature, uh, the uh, the commodity and also the uh, freight. Do you? Uh, but it's like almost like a five-year low margins for you, uh, considering that you have added capacity and there are excesses in costs which might have happened. Do you uh, plan to initiate any aggressive cost-cutting uh, measures? so that uh, along with the market recovery, you should be able to get the margins back to the historical much faster. So cost cutting is a, a continuous uh, step that goes on in the company. It, you know, when we have good quarters also, it's not that we don't look into cost cutting. That is something that is done regardless of the result, because if we can save anywhere uh, money, why we should not save? So that is not a result of uh, this, but uh, that is continuously uh, ongoing. And the last question is, uh, with regard to, uh, if I look at your annual report, the exposure uh, which you're taking for EIF and startup investments seems to be continuously going up. What's the rationale to fund it through the balance sheet, one? Second, uh, can you give a guidance in terms of the next three years, how much you plan to invest in this area? So as we told earlier that that was done last year to park the uh, funds, and now when the CAPEX cycle comes, the money will be used for that. So uh, we are, we don't know, uh, that was a temporary sort of nature uh, uh, parking of uh, funds, which was done. 
Thanks, Adol. And uh, we do not foresee any new money going there uh, towards that. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Rishi Vora from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, just uh, one question on realization, right? Uh, so historically, you used to do 260, 265 rupees per kg of realization. Uh, and obviously, there is price hikes which you have taken, but there is also some element of, uh, let's say, freight adjustments which happens in realization per kg. So once this uh, freight cost comes down, you know, where do you think uh, are our stable realizations would be, let's say, one year, two year down the line? It's difficult to put a number and tell you this is where we will expect it to be because of the product mix and, you know, it's FOB, CIF, so that will be difficult to put a number, but, uh, you know, uh, there will be some, uh, as these costs start going down, there may be some cutback in the realization also because that will be needed to be passed on, but it's right. difficult to put a number and say this is where we expect the range to be. But Let's what we can say current. that regardless of the realization, at the long term, uh, we, you know, we've always strived and maintain that our endeavor will be to maintain an EBITDA margin of 28 to 30 percent on long-term basis. Right. So, you know, that is where we will strive to be. So, just to follow on on your current realization of let's say 325, 330 rupees per kg, what would be the freight uh, uh, related uh, realization increase? If on this days, you if you can give us some idea, that would be helpful. That I I don't I mean we can't give that number now. Uh, okay, sir. and sir, just a last question on: uh, Do you expect RM inflationary pressure in second quarter as well? Yes. And you haven't taken any price hike uh, uh, in the in the current as in, in the second quarter in July and August, right? No. It's very okay. the market is challenging, so we may not we are not able to pass on uh, in this quarter. Okay, thank you so much. I mean, we just did a five percent in the Q1, so it's difficult to continuously pass on because you know it's the marketplace at least. Okay, thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Nishit Dharan from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, two questions. First of all, on demand side, uh, I think we can understand that uh, heat wave is impacting, would probably be impacting some demand of agri in Europe. Uh, but you have also talked about uh, some demand caution on the U uh, US front, uh, highlighting inflationary pressures. And then we are also hearing about uh, recessionary concerns on Europe. So in that context, how do you see demand from the next one year perspective, other than the temporary issue that probably you are foreseeing right now in the European agri segment? How are you seeing it in US and all? And, uh, and a related one on that, we are seeing a volume decline in the rest of the world market for the last two quarters now. So any comments on that, any market in particular where you are seeing some concerns uh, which have started to come? So, I mean, if you see in the last couple of quarters, our production was already maxed out. So we had to uh, sort of ration the goods. So that told, that is why certain markets have shown negative. Uh, you know, for the last two quarters, it's not that the market demand was falling. It is we were rationing the products to different areas. So that is it. Long term, we see, uh, you know, the opportunity is strong. We believe uh, the markets will uh, come back and uh, maybe a couple of quarters could be challenging. But overall, in the long term, the opportunity is good and we foresee it to be strong. Yes, sir, uh, definitely long term opportunity is good. But uh, specifically from the Americas on the US front, the comment, uh, that comment seemed um, more of a macroeconomic concerns on growth, inflation, and all this. It's probably unlikely to go over in the first one or two quarters or have some views over there and uh, pick up everything. That's what you feel. Sir, your voice muffled in the last uh, couple of sentences. Was so, what, US, I, what I was your comment for the US? So, basically, in US, what you have highlighted the concern of inflationary concerns or basically macroeconomic slowdown that is probably not going to go away in the next one to two quarters. Do you see that next one year or one and a half years could be challenging in US because there is no weather related issue in US? It's primarily uh, 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 impacting the probably the European agri market. So in the U.S. market in particular, uh, how are you looking at that uh, that market uh, from let's say next uh, three, four, five quarter perspective? I understand that the demand will be good over the medium term, but purely from the next one year or perspective. No, so we believe in U.S. also the market uh, for us would be good despite these. Uh, uh, trends, inflationary trends, because we, you know, at the moment we are in a stage of growing. So a lot of uh, foundation work had been done and results have started coming. So if you see in this current quarter also, 
America's was about roughly, um, you know, at about 22, 23 percent, up from about close to 18 percent. And a market, uh, you know, we had a growth over there of about 47 percent in America. So it's, you know, that we think, it, yes, the 47 percent growth may be come down slightly, but overall it will be good for us. Got it, sir. Got it. And so, secondly, on the freight part, I think another participant asked it. So, if I have to put it differently, this quarter, your uh, freight cost per ton was about 46, 47,000 rupees, right? Historically, if I look at freight cost per ton, has been about 11 to 13,000 rupees. Uh, so, fair to assume that the increase of about 30, 35,000 rupees, almost half of that, you mentioned that you are passing it on. Uh, to the customer. So fair to assume that 15 to 20,000 rupees per ton is the realization, uh, is reflecting in realization which will normalize going ahead as freight costs also normalize. Yes. 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 Okay. And lastly, what was your net debt level that you mentioned? Uh, sorry, I missed that. Our net debt? 750 crores broadly. Sorry, 750 crores, right? Yeah, very broadly. Okay, and sir, uh, 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 CapEx, uh, what are we looking at uh, this year and the next year? So this year we have already announced the CapEx, which is ongoing, uh, mm -hmm. which is about uh, roughly at about... Uh, uh, I mean, uh, from the announce, we have expected, this year will be about 900 crores to in the overall picture of what we have announced. And any any rough number that you can share for the next year? Next year, uh, we are working. I mean, we uh, have not, uh, we are yet, uh, yet on the drawing board for, uh, uh, you know, the new greenfield or brownfield project that is in work in progress. So we have not yet put numbers together. I mean, we are not ready to um, put it up to the board yet. We will uh, probably wait for, I mean, it's in the drawing board at the moment. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Priya Ranjan from HDFC Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, my question related to the currency depreciation of euro particularly and uh, related to the pricing gap between you and probably the premium player. So how do you see the market evolving in that context because your cost will be in uh, rupees and your uh, uh, selling will be in the euro and while the local manufacturers will have advantage because they have, a, a, I mean, the, their cost will also be in the euro and uh, the selling price will also be in euro. To the extent that we have export fear engine, there are uh, uh, imports of uh, raw material. Uh, so from a uh, uh, from a currency movement, there will not be too much of uh, impact of the currency movement that you are seeing today. No, but the problem is with the euro. On net basis, we are hedged uh, uh, for the year, and uh, that hedge currently stands at about 85 uh, to a euro for FY23. Okay. But beyond that, so is the price, I mean, the future price hike will also be depending on the price gap between uh, what you follow between, say, Miscellane or the premium guys and you. And and your raw material will typically be in dollars. So, so dollar has actually uh, appreciated while the euro, et cetera, has depreciated. So, I mean, uh, the cost side, you are seeing pressure in terms of dollars, but that can be offset probably from the sale of non euro side but uh, the euro side because that is the heavy, uh, most heavy volume uh, for you guys so around 50% coming from the europe side so. the differential between tier 1 and us will uh, continue to remain at the similar level the difference will continue at the same level okay. thank you the next question is on the line of Siddharth Vera from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my question is on the uh, capacity side. So right now, if you see, we are already at about 330, and you are saying we will reach by about 360 by the year end of the year. So uh, do you think for growth, uh, you may need to uh, have more capex uh, requirement or capacity coming up next year, or do you think uh, current levels are sufficient uh, for growth uh, in the next year? So, it's a, yes, we are, as I mentioned earlier, that we are already on the drawing board to look at either a brownfield or a, a new greenfield project. So, once we have more details, we will uh, share with you. But I think by uh, that's in the pipes, so you 
are absolutely right that it needs to be done and we are working on that working towards that got it and uh, generally how long would you think it would be required for uh, after you decide for the capacity to sort of small stream so if it's uh, if it's a brown field it'll be about uh, one year and uh, if it's green field it'll be uh, about 15 to 18 months okay got it thanks a lot Thank you. The next question is from the line of Joseph George from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just one question. So, if I look at um, um, you know your pre your previous uh, down cycles, um, once demand weakens, uh, it has lasted for you know three or four quarters, and uh, we don't come across too many instances where uh, one quarter demand is weak and then immediately the next quarter demand bounces back. This time, if I look at your guidance, you said that uh, 2Q would be weak, uh, but you've maintained your uh, full year guidance, which implies that you're expecting a volume um, uh, bounce back, uh, say, in 3Q and 4Q. So uh, I want to understand how is this uh, uh, you know, weakness different compared to what we have seen in the past? Um, how, how do you feel confident that uh, uh, you know, after one week quarter, things will bounce back, and as a result, you have maintained your full year guidance? That is one, and a related point is that uh, you mentioned that underlying demand is strong, but uh, uh, distributors are cutting back inventory because of which your uh, uh, you know offtake is lower. Um, do you think it's possible that the distributors are seeing uh, you know things on the ground much better because of which they are cutting down inventory in anticipation of uh, upcoming weakness in retail? So uh, if you can respond to that, thank you. So I think you uh, your second part answers the first question. You know what we see the at the end user level the demand is yet strong and uh, there is a, a good uh, uh, pickup over there. Uh, what, so that's why we are confident of these numbers. What we are saying um, that, you know, the destocking is happening at the uh, uh, distributor level because of the, you know, huge uh, excess. I mean, you know, there's been a big jump in the last quarter and last two quarters, actually. Uh, both the quarters have been uh, higher than the previous ones. So that uh, is now reaching them. Also, the shipping times have started to come down. So people are not, uh, you know, earlier what was taking four, five, six months to reach is now reaching in about four months because availability of containers has eased out. So that's why the, they are also looking to hold back some uh, orders and, you know, deplete will stock and then reorder. So we, that's why we are confident that in the Q3, Q4, hopefully the demand will uh, come back because we don't see it as a, uh, as a retail issue. We see it only as a temporary de-stocking issue. Okay, but the reason that you gave, which is heat wave, et cetera, seems to be an end-demand issue rather than a de-stocking issue. Those are, heat waves are coming, but I mean, if you see last week, uh, again, parts of Europe had good rain. So, you know, uh, those are, you know, that's why we said that it's weather and patterns in Europe are, uh, you know, it's a challenge for us in the near term. But we are quite confident the way, you know, the last one week range have all started coming, that it may ease out. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sanjay Satpati from Ampersand. Please go ahead. My question again is relating to uh, the demand. Are the dealers cutting down on uh, their inventory primarily because they anticipate or uh, price cut uh, because most of the raw material as well as freight costs etc are going down yes 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 okay and and uh, uh, unlike, like last two years almost uh, you have been seeing this uh, cost tracer and you have been taking hit in the margin and your long term guidance uh, which probably is uh, which, which which is not really being realized because of the cost tracer, but at the same time, considering how the dealers are behaving, so do you think then then the, your long term goal will get pushed out in terms of reaching back better margin? That you will be able you will be required to uh, give price cuts much before the cost benefit kind of uh, comes to you. No, we have uh, been able to pull that in the past also. So we are quite confident we'll be able to pull that. And then um, that's why we say that our endeavor is to maintain an EBITDA of 28 to 30% on long-term uh, basis. And, uh, you know, we are quite confident with looking at our past experience that we've been able to do that. You know, pull out the gap between passing and holding back. Okay. And if I just ask uh, in a little differently, like in uh, the end of March quarter result, uh, the commentary in terms of margin was as if like, 
the march quarter was the worst quarter but still uh, the margin uh, uh, fell further so what really went wrong between uh, uh, between the quarter that uh, the, uh, the, the margin again kind of uh, so i mean if you for the commentary i told you that you know we've had an impact between the two quarters of further hike of uh, freight to the tune of um, uh, nearly uh, 0.75% and also the Uh, raw material also had an impact of about uh, 1.5%. So those two things coming together has had an impact on the uh, margins. Uh, yes, uh, I understand that, but uh, the, most of the actual spot prices actually go, went down. So it is a case of your long-term contracts hurting you, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So so that is what. So the market uh, is not going to wait for your long-term contract to kind of ease out before. to get the benefit uh, so is it kind of a bit of a wrong call in terms of management uh, getting too much of long term contract or that is something which will ease out probably in quarter three itself that is what you are indicating that is that is our normal business means uh, whatever quarterly contract we are doing that material comes in the next up to next mid of the next quarter and uh, one or one and a half month inventory we are maintaining so always there will be a gap of one quarter between the price correction between market and our price correction mr so net net what i am asking is that did you take excessive inventory or long term contract because of the supply situation or it was a normal business so the, you know one quarter time it will bounce back that is the only it's a normal business call because you know it's difficult to always time that uh, when will be the lowest or when it will fall uh, you know there you will have a situation when you are waiting for stock because also in the previous quarters availability was challenging so if i had waited too long there would be a situation where i would not be having material to uh, produce so that would be another problem so it's you know at the end of thing it's very easy to say that you management did this wrong or right or what but it's a business call which happens and it's continuous process okay okay i i was just trying to say that it is a normal business or a speculative um, kind of no no we don't normal, speculate it is normal business. we only do our regular business there's no speculation in our business okay thanks a lot sir thank you The next question is from the line of Basudev Banerjee from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks. A few questions. Uh, one, uh, as uh, as you rightly mentioned, that you are uh, planning uh, next round of capex either through brownfield or uh, greenfield. Just wanted to know, uh, out of three sixty thousand ton, uh, butch is now at two lakh ton. So, how much incremental debottlenecking butch can see? Is it one lakh ton more? Uh, Yes, uh, we have a space for doing brownfield over there, so that can be done up to one lakh here. Yeah. Uh, uh, second thing, sir, um, as many of uh, the participants asked a similar question, just for more clarity, if I look at uh, why why uh, volumes are more or less up around twenty percent, and other expenses are up more than hundred percent, part of which is because of uh, multifold increase in freight costs, uh, power cost, inflation. Just wanted to understand: uh, Is there any uh, temporary elevated brand building activity going on for past few quarters, which will culminate, uh, or uh, nothing like that? All our sustainable brand building expenses in that line item. So, a lot of the brand building, especially in the Indian cricket uh, sector, happened in the last quarter. So, those expenses have all club, come and club together. And uh, you know, so that is what you are seeing. It's not that it is increased. Our uh sponsorship uh, related spends are uh, for, for the year are between 120 to 130 crore and uh, that is continuing so there's no su- sudden jump on that it's just that it has come in one quarter some payments have come in one quarter uh, so uh, if you can highlight sir out of that 120 130 how much was in q1 itself that will uh, give more clarity that that expense will normalize in coming quarter so will remain at that level for full year yes yes So, uh, if you can highlight sir, what was the quantum accounted in this quarter? Right. We don't have that exact number now. Uh, but uh, one can assume to be almost half of the full year number. Will that be right, sir? About forty percent. Around forty percent. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And last question, sir. Like uh, with uh, many participants also asked, so will it be right to assume that till date, where we are uh, more than uh, almost halfway through Q2 itself, 
uh, despite heat waves and adverse macro issues, uh, retail demand uh, in uh, Europe for you is still uh, very much uh, steady. Yes. The oh, retail demand you. is steady. That's why we are confident of uh, hitting those numbers. Sure. Thanks. That's all. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Chirag Shah from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, so thanks for the opportunity. So my first question is a follow-up on the investments in uh, equity instruments directly in that, that you have done. So 22, we saw a reasonable jump, uh, including if I take into account ETFs also that you have passed money. Uh, generally, in the past, we have ne you have not chosen equity instruments in that. In, uh, so what has changed and how should we look at it? So, so as we said, there is no change. It was just a temporary uh, parking when, when money was available. So, and because the, those times the debt rates were very, very low, and that's why we had done this. But uh, as we already said in my earlier commentary, that uh, no new money will be pa uh, put uh, in that. So, as the capex cycle comes, this money will be used for that. So it was just a temporary arrangement done uh, since we had the funds at that time. Okay. Uh... And uh, the second the second question was on uh, or, or on the outlook that you shared. Uh, see, when I look at your per kg of per ton cost sequentially, uh, there seems to be the the freight cost is also has not gone up significantly, maybe by a rupee or so per per kg. Okay, see, I'm I'm talking uh, Q4 to Q1. Yes. Okay, so the sequential increase is not as significant as uh, as you are indicating in that sense. So, uh, how does your contract on on the f uh, on this work for you? In, we can see a see an immediate reduction in your freight cost as the con as the rates go down, or even there there could be some lag. No, there there should not be a lag. There you will see an immediate uh, uh, impact, positive impact. And that impact, when do when can we expect? Can we expect from Q2 itself, given that uh, the rates have started coming down, or it will take some time? So what we said is that we will start seeing the benefit from uh, start uh, from this quarter, uh, quarter itself. But you know, significant impact by the time you start seeing it, because you know, it starts slowly and then it builds up. So you will see the big chunk of that relief by in the end of Q3. End of Q3. Okay, and the last question on demand, now while you are confident about achieving your guidance number, if if, if, if push comes to the shove, uh, between volumes and margins, how would you look at, given the macro uncertainty which is there, and beyond the point even you may not have clarity on that, so would you look at selling, uh, achieving the targeted volumes at the cost of profitability, because utilization is more important than... Uh, Margin, or you would focus on per kg or per EBITDA, per ton profitability. So how do how should we understand the balance uh, from here on? Assuming there is uncertainty, actually turns on the adverse side for us. So for us, margins and uh, profitability is more important. We have never compromised on that. So we will always focus to uh, build that. So if we have to choose between one, it would always be margins. The, uh, okay, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Samir Dasani from ICSA Prudential AMC. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks for the opportunity. I think uh, maybe this is answered, but just to understand, when I look at sequential, when I look at sequential uh, per kg metrics, right, your realization has gone up by twelve rupees. Uh, raw material cost maybe by nine rupees, and freight by three rupees. So your realization uh, majorly covers the impact, right? But if I look at EBITDA per kg, it has fallen down by ten rupees sequentially. Uh, and uh, can you, you know, explain? Uh, we could have answered it, but can you explain what is the kind of impact that that that's there in this quarter, and how can we assume or maybe look at this number going forward in few quarters? So you have to add uh, the power cost also, because as the demand went up, we did not have uh, our own captive power plant on place, so we had to use coal. Uh, which was having an impact on um, the power cost. And as for that, already the uh, power plant is uh, going to be set up. It's in final stages with Q3 uh, of this year. We should have that on board. So that should have a significant um, change in the power cost. And also, some, as I mentioned, that 
some of the advertising and branding cost for the whole year came in this quarter so right. that should ease off right right and how uh, just to understand this uh, advertisement how big would it be i mean in this entire scheme of things just uh, for for this thing i don't have those exact number break up from the which okay and secondly uh, when i look at your employee expenses on a sequential basis it has gone up by 20% uh is there some one offs or do you expect this to continue or what is the tra- trajectory that that would be there in this employee expenses so so as you see i mean in the last quarter we had incremental new plants come up so those costs have come where the whole production is not uh, come because that is a modular uh, production increases modularly but the manpower we have to take fully on board and also during the summer months we normally have some incentive for the people because you know to retain them so those two things have come in that quarter okay 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 and uh, you know if you can you know obviously you have provided a, a trajectory around the margins but if you can you know uh, can you just uh, provide some outlook on the ebitda per kg how do you see that panning out uh, will it will it go back to the earlier how do you see that i think in next few quarters i mean all i can say is that uh, we are expecting relief on logistics and on raw materials so those should come back uh, our endeavor is to hit 28 to 30% and as i said earlier also that you know our focus has always been on margins not on volumes so no, those things is uh, where we see but it's difficult to put a number on every quarter you know where do we see the numbers going next quarter what is there but yes we we see some relief in both the areas where our major pain is and also power and fuel we have already initiated the captive power plant coming up and that should also impact so all the three areas which are pain you will see relief in that no so uh, where i'm coming from is because all of these uh, the raw material and freight would be majorly pass on uh, for us right so uh, uh, you know in in ebitda per kg basis it won't so i'll interrupt you uh, because we when when it went up also we were not able to pass on the whole thing so when it okay. goes down also i mean those things we've done it in the past also so you know there's always a uh you keep some part of it in you know uh, right, you keep right, right. sort of full pass on it's like how in both sides when it goes up you don't do a full pass on when it goes down you don't do a full pass on right 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 understood thanks thanks for the thanks for the detail so thanks thank you the next question is on the line of abhishek jain from dolat capital please go ahead uh sir as the manufacturing cost is increasing in europe and us how do you see the opportunity in terms of the gaining market share because of the lower cost benefit can you throw uh, some light on the market share in europe and us in agri and ot are both sides so yeah i mean we see the markets to be good both uh, the opportunity to be good and uh, you know that's why we are looking at we are on three on the drawing board for our next expansion and uh, we personally believe that there is going to be a good opportunity for us in all over uh, including india and across the globe so how much uh, market share you gained in the first quarter uh, in the europe and us so we don't have the individual pick up okay sir and uh, your contribution from europe is going down uh, in percentage and absolute terms and contribution from absolute terms is going down in percentage terms but not absolute terms so is it because so of the logic so percentage may go down but the absolute term is growth there is a growth uh, about 14% uh, growth is there on number terms as on absolute numbers so europe on a yoy basis has grown 14% in volume terms uh, there is no degrowth per se in terms of uh, volume of course uh, as a contribution to overall sales uh, uh, it's come off i'm talking over the quarter and quarter basis sir. quarter on quarter basis so yeah q4 and q1 are never to be compared, compared. Uh, yeah because they are all cyclic businesses no so it's you can't compare the year quarter on quarter okay uh, so uh, you have lost some volumes in the russia and ukraine uh, so what is the percentage of that sir mm, no i mean that that's sort of big part of europe for us at the moment so we did not see any major impact of that okay sir. and my last question is related with the indian market uh, um, in this quarter we have seen a higher growth versus the other uh, market is it the region of the sap contraction on the margin side also is it the is it also a region for the sap contraction in the margin side uh, how much 
So, how much difference is the margin of export versus domestic? Sir? Domestic is always two three percent cheaper as compared to export. So, that is what I think. Okay, sir. That's that's all from my side. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Senthil Manikandan from I Thought PMS. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good morning. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, my question is uh, from the competition perspective. Uh, we have seen a uh, couple of major players who are expanding the capacity on the operator tires in India, and also a new player has put up a uh, full green field plant in Gujarat. So they are also planning. Uh, to export from here and the business model is quite similar to the company. Uh, so if you could uh, uh, just uh, share your thoughts on the same thing. Thanks. So uh, what we are saying is uh, at BKT, we see for BKT, the branding that we have done over the last five, six, seven years has really helped us grow. Our brand equity has grown, brand recognition has grown, brand acceptability has grown. And with the current market share of 6%, we believe there is an opportunity for us to grow in our business for which we are looking and seeing how we can further capitalize on this opportunity. And that's why we are looking at expansions. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Ashutosh Tiwari from Equitas Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, you mentioned that the stock with the shooter is 20 percent higher. Uh, so is it like quarter on quarter higher or it is compared to pre-COVID normal uh, stock level that is higher by 20 percent? It's uh, between year on year quarter, uh, compared to the two quarters yearly. So uh, any, any color uh, in terms of months, how bad would be in terms of distributed stocks right now versus normal pre-COVID? So they normally keep, they would like to ideally be between two and a half to three months, and we believe it's slightly higher than that. Okay. And uh, secondly, uh, uh, how do you see the competition with Chinese uh, companies? I think in between, because freight costs went up a lot from China, uh, their volumes have come down across different markets. Do you should see that increasing now? Are, are you seeing any trend in that? No, we are not. At, at the moment, we are not seeing any trend in that. Okay. Thank you. That's all from my side. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Ronald Sada from Systematics. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, uh, sir. A couple of data points. Firstly, uh, the bush production and the raw material cost, uh, synthetic rubber and steel uh, steel wire, if you can share. One minute, that is one minute. Sure. So we don't give plant price breakup, but total production is about 84,000 tons. Okay. And uh, sure. synthetic rubber cost varies because two different variants are there. It is 160, 65 to 200 rupees per kg. Okay. And steel wire? Steel wire is around 110 rupees a kg. Okay. And uh, sir, did I hear it correct? Did you say net debt at 750 crore? Yeah, yeah uh, approximately. Okay. But because in quarter four, the net debt was around 1900 crores. So is there a, a very sharp no, movement? There is a gross debt of 2750 crores. Yes. And the 1900 was the gross debt. So gross debt today is about 2750 crores and we have cash and cash equivalents of 1975. So broadly it's about 750 crores of uh, net debt. Got it. My mistake then. Uh, so thanks for that. And secondly, uh, sir, if you can help us understand now, you know, how is our uh, exposure to USD denominated cost, uh, both on operating level and capital uh, capital investment side? And uh, is that also a big part, in, you know, how our realization and costs are moving uh, both in tandem and hence the margin looks uh, optically lower? Uh, so if you can just help us understand what are the USD denominated costs right now. I think there is a natural hedge uh, between uh, the dollar uh, expenditure and dollar uh, earnings. So broadly there is no structural change in terms of how the currency is impacting the business. 
ఆయన డెప్రిసియేషన్ దట్ వుడ్ ఇన్ఫ్లేట్ బోత్ అవర్ టాప్ లైన్ అండ్ ది ఎక్స్పెన్స్ సైడ్ ఎస్ వెల్ రైట్ కరెక్ట్ బట్ ఫ్రమ్ మార్జిన్ పర్స్పెక్టివ్ మార్జిన్ పర్స్పెక్టివ్ ఆ మేజర్ ఛాలెంజ్ గాట్ ఇట్ గాట్ ఇట్ అండ్ లాస్ట్లీ అగైన్ ఆన్ ద డిమాండ్ సినారియో సో ఐ మీన్ based on uh, the second half run rate then do you believe it can cross uh, or across upwards of 175000 is that the kind of uh, estimate uh, are we building in uh, given q2 will be weak or uh, despite uh, when, when when you say q2 weak is it more like a substantial drop in put up in uh, volume spot on quarter uh, how exactly do you define uh, when, when you say it will be tepid so we don't want to put a number to it we have given the directional uh, movement and we are quite confident of that okay uh great thank you thank you the next question is from the line of abhishek singhal from naredi invest please go ahead good afternoon sir hi good afternoon yeah when will you start uh, pass on the increase uh, cost of raw material to the customer and the second day carbon black carbon black plant is starting q3 fy23 so how much revenue will increase and also how much margin will increase from this carbon black plant so the carbon black plant turnover we will be having approximately 800 crore rupees in this year and margin will be at industry average sir so what is margin that's for industry average Okay. And when will we start uh, pass on the cost of raw material? Cost of production, we were already passing from the last many quarters. And now further cost passing is difficult because raw material prices already started moving downwards. So we will wait. for the downward passing first we will absorb whatever we have not could not be passed and there after we will start passing if, if this continues downward okay. and the, our thermal power plant so sir from where will you we don't have a thermal power plant okay so it is a 20 megawatt plant is renewable energy plant we planning to we we have to, um, currently two plants one is already operating and another we will be operating in quarter q3 it, it is a thermal power plant or renewable energy we, it is uh, it will be from the carbon tail gas whatever carbon we produce there we will be getting tail gas so we will be utilizing the tail gas and because till tail gas was not available we use the coal okay so so from where we get coal coal we buy from the market adani port or many place many people are selling it okay thank you thank you next question is on the line of nishit jalan from access capital please go ahead yeah so thank you sir just one uh, small question uh, typically we don't have any industry body uh, which gives a market share data so when you say 6% kind of a market share do you do any calculation from your side or do you uh, get any third party data uh, to track uh, these uh, these market share so there are tracker there are agencies who do tracking they have estimates and our own uh, knowledge and uh, uh, research is also ongoing where we can track rough, roughly where we are and what the numbers are okay. so because because why I'm, where i'm coming from also is uh, if i go back 3 years in time then also we were talking we used to talk about 5 6% kind of a market share so have we not gained any market share in the last 3 4 years so what we used to talk earlier was 4 to 5% and now we are talking 5 to 6% so market has also grown and we have also grown so it's a combination of both and sir would you have any sense uh, as to uh, what would be the kind of market share that the top three players would have in the market and all i would assume that michelin would be the leader any and yokohama would also be another big player but any sense on the market share of the, the top three players that you can give us no i can give you my uh, numbers i don't have uh, their data okay sir no worries thank you so much thank you Ladies and gentlemen, that would be our last question for today. I now hand the conference over to the management for their closing remarks. Thank you and over to you. So thank you uh, to everybody for coming on this call. We hope uh, to see you next quarter. Till then, uh, stay safe. Thank you. See you.
Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Anand Rati Share and Stock Brokers, that concludes today's call. Thank you all for joining us. And